remember where you were the first time you heard about the runaway gingerbread man? Do you remember who you were with? What you were wearing? How his story made you feel inside? Because I sure don't. Run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. That phrase was burned into my psyche years before I was old enough to give it consent. And I swear to God that if you put a billion dollars of my dog's life on the line, I could not tell you where I originally heard it. I know for a fact that I was already familiar with the gingerbread man by the time Shrek came out in 2001. Run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. You're a monster. But if I'm being completely honest, I don't know if I was ever told his full story or had just heard that iconic line thrown around. Because when I did my research for this video, I was horrified by the story's ending. It seems like something I would definitely remember hearing and be partially traumatized by as a child. What makes the story even crazier though is that Gingy is not the only one of his kind. Stories about runaway food have been told for centuries and can be found in cultures throughout Europe and beyond. But not all of those edibles were as harmless as the gingerbread man. Today we're covering some of those darker variations, figuring out where they came from and what lessons they could have possibly been trying to teach. My name is John Solo and this is the messed up origins of the gingerbread man. So in order to figure out where and when this story was first told, we have to look at the origin of the snack that it stars. Because a gingerbread man is a very specific kind of snack. Not only do you have the combination of ginger and bread, but it's also been crafted into the shape of a tiny man. Such things do not exist in nature, meaning that someone out there was the first person ever to make a gingerbread man. Who was that person? Well, like most things in history, we can't give an answer with 100% certainty, and to this day, there is much debate. Some sources say it was the Muffin Man. Do you know him? He lives on Drury Lane. But the other widely accepted progenitor of Gingy Boys is none other than Queen Elizabeth I, or at the very least, someone who worked for her. You know the queen wasn't getting her hands dirty in the kitchen. The story goes that during the 16th century, Queen Elizabeth I presented some visiting dignitaries with gingerbread men that were decorated to look just like them. And the nobles had such a positive reaction that the common folk heard about this exchange and bakers in the village started making gingy boys of their own. Since her reign began in 1558, we know the story was first told Told sometime after that, and there was no doubt that it was passed on orally without being written down for at least a few centuries. We can say that confidently because that is the case with literally every folktale. That process is part of its definition. Not to mention, as you're about to see, the earliest written version of the gingerbread man is very repetitive, making it easy for both adults and children to memorize and pass on without writing it down. Although the gingerbread story was designed for easy listening and memorization, someone did eventually have the wisdom to transcribe it. We don't know the woman's identity, but in 1875, she submitted a story called The Gingerbread Boy to St. Nicholas Magazine, a popular children's periodical that was printed in New York City. The quote from her submission reads, The gingerbread boy is not strictly original. A servant girl from Maine told it to my children. It interested them so much that I thought it worth preserving. I asked where she found it, and she said an old lady told it to her in her childhood, so it may possibly have been in print, though I have never seen it. The story opens by introducing the reader slash listener to a little old man and little old woman living in a little old house at the edge of the woods. They were a happy couple, but one thing was missing, a child in the house. One day, the old woman is making gingerbread and acting out her heart's desire, she carves one of the cakes into the shape of a little boy before putting it in the oven. A little while later, she checks on the bread to see if it's baked, and at the very same moment she opens the oven, the gingerbread boy jumps out and runs away as fast as he can. Naturally, the man and woman were surprised by this, so it took them a second to process what just happened. And by the time they composed themselves, the gingy boy had enough of a head start that there was no chance they would catch him. A few hundred meters down the road, Gingy was approaching a barn full of threshers, which are farmhands who separate grain from plants. And as he passed them, he called out, I've run away from a little old woman, a little old man, and I can run away from you, I can. Now, to be fair, outrunning to old people is not exactly difficult, but the Threshers took his taunts as a personal challenge and gave chase, though it wasn't long before he'd outrun them as well. Next, Gingy comes across a field full of mowers and he calls out to them, I've run away from a little old woman, a little old man, a barn full of Threshers, and I can run away from you, I can. Once again, the laborers accepted his challenge. After all, they could use a good snack after working all morning 
morning, but once again, Jinji outruns them and he doesn't even have to try that hard. So this is the formula the rest of the story follows. The gingerbread boy also passes by a cow and pig and taunts them while adding the names of his defeated opponents to every call out. It's not until the end that Jinji finally bites off more than he could chew. Pun intended. He passes by a fox and says, I've run away from a little old woman, a little old man, a barn full of threshers, a field full of mowers, a cow, and a pig, and I can run away from you, I can. Next, the fox takes off after him. But what this ignorant little boy doesn't realize is that foxes are wicked fast creatures. So it's not long before the beast catches up to Jinji and chomps down on him. This is where things get graphic. With every bite the fox takes, the gingerbread boy is crying out in pain. He says, Oh dear, I'm a quarter gone. Oh, I'm half gone. I'm three quarters gone. I'm all gone. And the story ends by telling us that Gingy never spoke again. Until he was turned into a turd and became Mr. Hanky. No, not really. But that's the epilogue I'm adding to my head canon. In all seriousness, that ending may not have been quite as graphic as you expected, but firstly, that's not the worst story of the bunch, and secondly, put yourself in Jinji's position. Him crying out that he's a quarter gone, half gone, etc., is his reaction to his limbs being torn off. He might as well be screaming out, my leg, oh my God, he's eaten my leg. There's so much frosting. When you think of it that way, which is exactly how I would have imagined it as a child due to my early exposure to games like Mortal Kombat and movies like Saving Private Ryan, it gets pretty grotesque. Now you may have noticed that this variation of the tale, the first one ever written about a gingerbread boy, is lacking that iconic line that we all know. Well, it turns out that didn't become a staple of the story until a few decades after its first publication in English. Once again, we don't know exactly who came up with it or when it was first set up. Out loud, but in 1913, it was printed in volume 20 of a school teacher's workbook called Primary Education. The book is chock full of lesson plans and creative ways to get students to engage in class, and under the correlated language and occupation lesson section is the story written in all of its glory. I'm not gonna bother breaking it all down because it's basically the exact same as the last one, but there are some distinct differences. Firstly, there's the gingerbread boy's call out. Instead of those clunky lines in the original telling, he says, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. We're missing the third run, but it's close enough, right? Another difference is that unlike the original telling where the old man and woman didn't expect Gingy to come to life, in this one, their baking him was the solution to their loneliness. He was going to be their child who helped do their chores and run errands for them. The final difference is a slightly more creative ending. The fox that eats Gingy doesn't just catch him, he tricks him by saying he'd never eat him and offering to give him a ride across the river on his back. Kind of a reversal of the old scorpion and frog fable. Once they're in the river, the fox starts to slowly submerge his back in water, so Gingy has to move up to his head. Then the fox submerges his head in water, forcing Gingy to move up to his nose. And as soon as that happens, it's a wrap. The fox opens his mouth, Gingy falls in, and once again he's eaten one bite at a time. Pretty brutal if you ask me, but as we addressed earlier, the gingerbread boy is a variant of a classic type of fable that's been found in many countries throughout Europe and surrounding it. ATU 2025. What? <laughs> Cumulative tales about runaway food. Cultures that didn't make gingerbread had their own versions with snacks that were local to their country's cuisine, and we're gonna dive into those next section. But first, I wanna say thank you to the sponsor who made this episode possible, our friends at Upstart. Over the past several years of doing this show, I've noticed that the most common desire for fairy tale characters is to be rich. Whether it's Aladdin or the fisherman's wife, whenever a character is granted a wish, one of the first things they ask for is money. While I'm sad to say that genies do not exist in the real world, but if you've always dreamed of being financially healthy and shedding the burden of high interest credit card debt, Upstart can help you with that. Here's how it works. Unlike other lenders, Upstart considers more than just your credit score. They use your income, employment, and other info you put in your application to see if you qualify. You can do this entire process online, and after a five-minute assessment, you're given the size of loans you qualify for, which can range from $1,000 to $50,000. And you can receive your funds as fast as one business day. After that, it's up to you how you want to use those funds to pay off your credit cards, consolidate some high-interest debt, or even pay pay for a personal expense. So if you feel like you're being consumed by high interest credit card debt and wanna lower your monthly payments to something more manageable, either hit the link below or go to upstart.com slash John Solo. That's upstart.com slash John Solo. Hey. 
As is usually the case with folk tales in different countries, the variants of this tale type all follow the same sequence of events. Someone, it could be a person or a talking animal, decides to cook a snack. That snack becomes sentient and flees the household. And after challenging many a strangers to race, the snack will ultimately meet its end. But depending on where you look, that snack and the creature that eats it could be very different. In Norway, there's a famous story called The Pancake that was printed in a collection called Norwegian Folk Tales in the 1840s. That story is basically the same as the gingerbread man, except it stars, you guessed it, a pancake. And in the end, he's fooled not by a fox, but a pig who ferries him across the river. A German story that follows a very similar format and also stars a pancake has an ending that's actually kind of wholesome. In this one, the pancake successfully outruns his competition, but allows himself to be eaten by three orphan children who are starving. I know, surprisingly tame for German folklore, but that one wasn't collected by the Grimm brothers, so it makes more sense. A few other variants include one from England called Dothra Dad, where the snack is a bowl of pudding that somehow has a fairy child inside of it. The Wee Bannock is a Scottish version about some flatbread, and the wonderful cake from Ireland stars a piece of runaway cake. It's impossible to say which of those was created first, but all of them were collected either before or roughly the same year that the gingerbread boy was printed in St. Nicholas Magazine. Magazine. Some modern variants that were almost definitely inspired by the Gingerbread Boy's popularity include The Runaway Tortilla, written by Eric Kimmel in 2000, a Hanukkah-themed story called The Runaway Lat Keys, and a Chinese New Year tale titled The Runaway Rice Cake. There is one story that stands out among the rest though. It's a Hungarian folk tale called The Little Dumpling, but this probably isn't the kind of dumpling that you're thinking of. The Hungarian word for dumpling is gumbut. Apologies for my pronunciation. And gumbut is the stuffed stomach of a pig. Stuffed with what? I don't think it matters. I'm not eating it. As if that wasn't gross enough, instead of the characters in the story chasing after the dumpling like in other variants, it's the dumpling chasing after people. What happens is a Hungarian family reaches the very end of their supply of meat for the season, and the only thing they have left to eat is this dumpling. When the daughter reluctantly goes into the attic to cut it down from the string it's hanging on, the dumpling swallows her whole, so now she's trapped inside this pig stomach with no way out. After this, the stomach goes on to eat the siblings who go up to the attic to check on their sister, their mother, and their father, who actually didn't even notice that his family was missing, he just wanted to eat the dumpling and was eating himself. With the weight of five people inside of it, the dumpling breaks through the attic floor, crashes through the wall of the house, and starts slowly rolling down the hill, swallowing up everything and anything that gets in its way. People, pigs, thus making it cannibalistic, and even an entire army. It's not until the dumpling comes across the shepherd boy that it finally meets its match because that shepherd boy had a knife in his pocket, and after he swallowed, he uses the knife to tear open the dumpling from the inside, freeing everyone and becoming a hero. One of my favorite aspects of folklore is the wide variety of reasons behind a story's creation. What phenomenon is it trying to explain? Or what lesson is it trying to teach? Some stories have obvious morals. Goldilocks taught us not to trespass. Sinbad showed that to make the most of your life, you have to take risks and force yourself out of your comfort zone. But what about the gingerbread boy and the stories like it? What am I supposed to have learned from this runaway pastry? Well, that depends on what ending you choose to go with. In the original, the fox doesn't trick Gingy. He just catches Gingy after he's called out. So in that scenario, I'd say the lesson is be humble because people can surprise you. In the other common endings, where the fox or pig trick Gingy into getting closer to them by ferrying him across the river, or in some variants pretending to be deaf, I believe the lesson is don't trust strangers. Both are solid morals to pass on and amazingly still applicable over a century later. It's too bad the kids nowadays aren't entertained by these sort of stories. If you want them to care about a gingerbread man, you gotta tell them it's the Fortnite skin. As for that last story about the Hungarian dumpling, I don't think there was any lesson to be taken out of that one. It's a straight up horror story and it's burned into my brain forever. How about you though? Are you as emotionally scarred as I am after picturing a stuffed pig stomach devouring a city of innocent Hungarians? Let me know in a comment down below. I also wanna know your thoughts on the original gingerbread story because I'm curious if I'm the only one who went my whole life knowing about the gingerbread man without actually hearing the story he's from. When you're through with that, take a big ol' bite out of those like, subscribe, and share buttons. Not only does that give the channel a boost in the YouTube algorithm, but it also guarantees that more messed up content will be in your sub box every week.
week. Links to my social medias can be found in the description. Give those a follow if you want to send me a suggestion or stay updated on what new content that I'm working on. Also say hi to my little fur baby, Penny. Real talk, if the gingerbread boy challenged her to a race, she'd probably catch him faster than the fox did. She's a little speed demon. Although she is very tired, so now might not be the best time. I will see you all again next Thursday when I cover an infamous Norse myth about Loki's son, Slepnir. Until then though, remember, my name is John Solo and John shot first. Thank you.